Hello everyone, Ryan Travis back with you guys for the second part of our property inspection. This is the roofing system inspection and the technician is at the top of the ladder performing his e-photos. So we're going to be getting three photos right there at the top of the ladder, shingle gauge, gauging um, what kind of shingle that is and the life expectancy of it. And this appears to be a 30 year laminate shingle. Some people will call it dimensional, some people will call it an architectural just has that three-dimensional look to it because of the profile. Uh, that next photo that he's got is the layer and drip photo. But not only that, the technician is usually gonna check for any kind of starter shingle, um, if there's gonna be any kind of ice and water, or if there is ice and water right there at the eave, uh, depending on your code or climate areas or regions, and uh, whether or not the felt is properly installed over top of the drip edge. So some of the manufacturing specifications for installation and um, you know, kind of what's going on with the roofing system upon access. The next photo is going to be your pitch gauge photo. So the technician is gonna be given a reading for the predominant pitch of the shingle or the, the roofing system. So this is the majority of the roofing system. Now that doesn't mean that we can't have secondary pitches depending on the how cut up the roofing system is, the, the uh, transitions, any kind of additions that's been added to the property. Um, there's sometimes some low slope transitions that you'll run into where the pitch matters because when we go to sketch or get an eagle view or aerial imagery and sketch this roofing system, the pitches will play a vital role in the square count. After the technician gets their e-photos, they're gonna be moving up to the top of the ridge and we go all the way to our very far left side and we're going to pan counterclockwise. Now this may vary from technician to technician or contractor. Uh, it's kind of the, just the way we do it. We'll pan counterclockwise and get our overviews of the layout of that roofing system itself. So the technician appears to be trying to copy, copy their documentation right there so they can just add on to it as they move through the property inspection. Sometimes it's, it's, little techniques like that that'll speed speed you up when you're documenting your findings or documenting the property. The fir fir first photo was your front left photo and to better explain that uh, we call our directional sides based on standing at the front of the property looking head on at it and your left arm being the left side of the property right arm being the right side of the property so standing head on looking right at the property. He's going to move into his front right photo here, so overview of the roofing area. This roofing system, I think, it, it appears to be a partial hip, so your right and left directional slopes, that's just a small triangle, and uh, don't believe the technician will be performing any kind of Test squares on, on a small triangle. There's just nothing to anchor into for safety. And it's just such a small area. But in most cases, we're gonna document all directional sides or all, um, all slopes, facets to give, you know, a more accurate, a more accurate investigation or documentation for the property. So still moving into your overviews. Roofing system overview of the roofing area. He's going to add to that at the end. Once again, um, this is this is to show the layout of the property. So if anybody needs to reference back to our documentation, that'll kind of get the layout and, and how we moved about our property inspection. There's the left showing that partial hip, so you can see that triangle is very small. Um, it's not really in a good area for us to safely do a test test square on unless we had some additional help or a, another place to anchor into. That pitch is probably right at about 11, 11 12 or 12, 12. After doing the roofing system overviews, you're going to move into your roofing components. Now, this may vary once again from technician or contractor. Uh, in the order in which they, they document your accessories on the roofing system. Um, the, our, our technicians will move right into that right after their overviews. 
essentially giving you an accessory count. So here are your box fence. That first closest box fence, the technician's showing no spatter, so no hailstones have, have cleaned off any kind of oxidation on that metal box fence. The one in the background looks like it says no collateral. That's where the technician has fully chalked that box vent. There's no kind of, there's no uh, concave impressions, um, indentions that could be brought out by that chalk. That photo right there is kind of a two and one. The technician's documenting the exhaust through roofs, those two little small rusted looking vents. The correct name for them, if you go to like a Home Depot or a supply house, uh, those would be brone vents, and then you have your neoprene collar, neoprene flange in the background that's covering that uh, PVC or that pipe jack. Technician, after he documents his soft metals to kind of give any kind of indication of, of damage to the property from a recent storm event for some of your cover-related perils, the next photo is one of the most acceptable areas for hail damage to a roofing system. So that's the ridge cap. So at the very center of that ridge cap, there's a little bit of a void. And um, sometimes the, the hail stones will actually hit that ridge cap and leave some uh, blemishes or fractures to the cap itself. After documenting that, the technician appears to be moving into his front slope. So this photo's showing a close-up of his chalk marks, no observed damage to this directional slope. After that, we're gonna move into an overview. So this is an overview of our test area to once again reference back to where our documentation was completed at for the areas of our test squares, if somebody needs to reference back to that exact test square in the future. So overview of the test area after Retrieving that overview is going to move right into that 10 by 10 test area to document any kind of any kind of anomalies inside that test area. So that right there is blistering. So any kind of anomalies other than, you know, not it's non-functional or functional damage is what we're looking for. That right there is a spot defect. So we can't clearly identify that. Um, that can be installation, it can be distribution, it can be manufacturing, where there is a circular mark, there's no kind of concave impression in the asphalt and down to the fiberglass base mat. And once again, there's no documentation to support hail damage to the property uh, from your exterior elevations, you're doing your perimeter walk around or your soft metals on the roofing system. So the technician labeled that as a spot defect. This photo is another photo or overview of where that test area was performed on the front slope. After retrieving that, it's gonna move directly into his rear slope. Once again, um, an overview of his chart marks stating that there's no, direction, no damage observed to that directional slope. Once again, an overview of that test area. Getting inside the test area, picking out some of your roofing anomalies. So this one right here is blistering. Looks like he's right on top of a laminate portion. There's a photo with his hand by it stating mechanical damage to the laminate portion. Once again, it's hard to identify whether that's foot traffic or a tool. Um, it's a linear abrasion that does not correlate with any kind of cover related damage or perils uh, from a storm event. This photo is an offset exposure photo, so OE. Um, when the guys are installing the roofing system, they'll chalk everything off on their felt paper to make sure that all their exposures line up and, and one doesn't overlap the other. Um, that looked like it was very, you know, a very marginal overlap. The exposure didn't look that bad. Um, blistering right here in the laminate portion. Once again, an overview of that roofing area. And if there was real bad offset exposures, that roofing system right there, those those lines you see would kind of be, they, they would look more like a snake if your exposures are really bad and, and the uh, guys didn't 
then properly chalk off everything before laying the shingles. Technician is going over to the guttering system to show no observed impressions. Once again, these are your soft metals. This helps us document the findings to the property uh, to give any kind of indication that, that some type of damage has hit the property. Now, sometimes the gutters, guttering systems will be clean and, will, and you can have damage to the shingles themselves, but it's just one extra thing to document to justify your overall assessment. That photo right there is just our fall protection devices that we use to safely access the roofing system. Now, that pitch didn't necessarily call for any kind of fall protection, but I believe the technician um, stated that this roofing system was still a little bit wet. You can kind of see it's drying up a little bit right there. Uh, it's a very cold in this, uh, in this region right now, so sometimes we can run into some frost or some ice, so we wanna make sure that we use the proper safety equipment to access that roofing system if necessary. So the technician is going through his photo report. It's gonna be generating his uh, PDF report to provide to our quality evaluators for them to review and go over everything just to make sure that all of our documentation is clear and it outlines our findings at the property so an insurance uh, carrier adjuster can make a final determination or coverage call on this claim or a homeowner can take this information and they can uh, move forward with any kind of reasonable repairs or just to have that documentation for the future uh, if they go to sell the home or anything like that. So that sums up all of our findings in this property inspection and the part, second part of this roofing inspection. And we will final, finish up everything with part three, just going over our final report to submit to a homeowner or a carrier. Thank you.